Hello everyone. Welcome to another Food for Thought video. In this video, I'm going to share some planning, budgeting, and organizing techniques that should help you with your project. The goals are to stay within your budget and get your car on the road, also known as finishing what you started. Now money and maintaining motivation are the two biggest reasons why projects don't get finished. This is why it's important to break your project into small parts with minor and major milestones. Keep in mind, there's always going to be some variation from the original plan, and you're going to adjust your timeline somewhat. But such is life. For Benji, getting the engine running really reignited my motivation to get everything done that I need to get done so the car can drive reliably and legally. And, you know, hearing that turbo spool up and then getting pushed back into my seat for the first time, it was super satisfying, but also pretty scary. But at the end, like, I want you guys to experience that first drive just like I did, because it's awesome. Staying on topic with that, you know, your project, and I'm sure many people would agree, it's never really finished. You'll drive it and you'll get to a point where you like it where it is, but it's going to evolve. And that's the beauty of making something yours. The cars, the projects, it will evolve with the owner. So first I want to talk about planning. The first thing you need to do is figure out what you want out of your project. Planning comes before budgeting because knowing the end game for your project will allow you to set realistic timelines and a budget. You aren't going to build a full race Porsche for $500 and especially not going to do it over a weekend. You have to figure out if your project is going to be a weekend warrior or a purpose built car. It sounds simple, but if you don't stick to your guns, a lot of time and money will be wasted. And this is because converting your weekend warrior into a track car later down the road will have you taken off performance parts that you've already installed, getting rid of external and internal cosmetic upgrades. And ultimately you've turned a really good daily driver into a gutted shell that you probably could have just started with for a fraction of the cost. So if you want something to track frequently, you should probably just get a rolling shell or something in pretty bad shape. You're probably gonna end up replacing a lot of the parts anyway. And plus with the money that you saved, you can use that saved money to go towards upgrades. Now, whether you want a weekend warrior or a track built car, in both cases, it's probably best to have a second car. Now, if it's nice or a beater, that's up to you. But few things are worse than having a broken car on Sunday and having to work on Monday morning. Okay, so once you figure out if you want a weekend warrior or a track car, you have to figure out which platform works best for your application. Platform being the car that you want to use. Um, once you figure that out, we can go into budgeting. We can do that because you have a purpose and a car in mind, and you can start shopping around for everything. Now, unless you're participating in the 24 hours of lemons, the budget can have a wide range. I like to include the car costs in my budget, so I'm as frugal as possible when I'm shopping around. Budgets are tricky because they can challenge you or they can make you careless depending on your situation. Okay, so we know what platform we are using and what kind of performance we need. So therefore, we can look up parts and services to guesstimate what will it cost me on the performance end. This is where you start to build a list. I suggest creating an Excel file, a Google Sheet, or whatever program you want to use, but make a list, probably several. Um, electronic filing isn't the most fun, but it's a very powerful tool that will keep your project rolling. Um, this is basically how mine was set. I have the part, the part number, the manufacturer, the website, and the retail cost. As you can see, I created subcategories which makes it easier to sort through. I know that it's impossible to foresee everything you need, so just put the things that you know you want. And as the project moves along, the list will grow and parts may change, but at least it'll give you a ballpark idea. 
Now, after you make your basic list and you look up the average cost of what the car is going to cost you, you want to add about probably about 25% of the total, and that's going to go towards miscellaneous upgrades, maintenance parts, tools, consumables, etc. You're going to spend more money than you plan. <laughs> um, this doing that 25% will give you a realistic budget. If you want your money to go longer, you can shop around for used parts. Um, you can do the work yourself. And when you order parts, you can wait for holidays because usually most companies will have discounts during the holidays. So the next section of this video is organizing. By this point in the video, you've already started organizing um, with the use of lists and, and build mapping. The foundation for organ organizing is already set but I want to expand on some ideas. The parts list is an active list that lets me know the status of the part. The status is noted by color. No color means there was no action taken. Yellow means the part was ordered and green means that the part is in my possession. But the list isn't just for parts. I also made a to-do and a quick list. My to-do list is the same, uses the same color code as the parts list. Um, they just have different definitions. The no color is uh, no action taken. Yellow is in progress and green is done. And then there's a quick list. Now the quick list is really, really handy. I put stuff in there where I randomly think of things I need to order or perform, like if I'm just online or checking my emails or if I just on a website and I just find a, a cool part. Um, usually I use that when I'm not really in a product mindset. So I just copy and paste the part name and the part number. And then later on, I'll update and populate my more organized list if I decide to go along with that part or action. Um, a list is a must if you want to keep your project moving forward because not only does it allow you to revisit your thought process earlier, but it will free up brain space because you'll be up at night thinking about, oh, I got to order this part or I got to order that part versus having a list where you can literally just put that part and the part number in the Google search and have it pop up. Now, another sort of list is a timeline. Creating a timeline is essential. I use a dry erase board. I suggest getting yourself at least one dry erase board. The time you set really depends on your situation and project. If you work full time, have a family or have financial constraints, all these things need to be considered. You want to set your time goals where they're obtainable. If you don't set time goals that are reasonable, it will be very discouraging to you finishing your project. For example, if you plan on building a beginner drift car, you can get a beater real drive car, some tires you could thrash, and maybe get your diff welded. In this case, most people can set their timeline within a month. Now take that same idea, but you want it to be nice. This is going to take a significant amount of more time and money. Time actually being the main component. It's the old saying, you know, you get what you pay for. But in this case, you're paying with time. In this example, a weekend engine swap, a welded diff, and a paint job isn't going to be as nice and probably won't drive as well as a 60-day swap, a built diff, and a decent paint job. So in setting your time goals, you have to consider that and consider what you want. Now I put my dry erase boards in the garage and somewhere in the house that was visible to remind me to get off my ass if I was slacking. I also like dry erasers because they're cheap, they don't need a power source, they can take physical abuse, <laughs> and you put that line through the task once they're done. It's so satisfying. All right, so to wrap things up, let's review. To start, have a good idea of what you want in terms of genre, performance, and aesthetics. Saying that you want an eight second drag car that does time attack, drift competition, and is good for going to the grocery store, that's just not gonna cut it. So after you do that, you're gonna create a budget based on your realistic idea. Then you just start the fun part. You just jump into your project. You either buy or start working on the machine 
that will decimate all if you put about 15 grand into it. I'm just kidding. No, not really. Um, it's going to cost. Then you will reach the glorious day when you turn that key, push that button, or flip that switch, and all the blood, sweat, and tears, and arguments, and friends talking trash, long waits for parts deliveries, and where the fuck does this ball go, and where the fuck is my 10 millimeter, and why the fuck doesn't this fit, days will be all worth it. And with that being said, stay tuned, and thanks for watching.